Good day, everyone, and welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday. You can at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, however, that relates to you around the world. That's very cool. Uh, you can join us by going to socialsellingwednesday.com. That's socialsellingwednesday.com. And then you can hear us via podcast through all of the channels where we are distributed as well. But we invite you to join us live so that you can get on and get in on the conversation either by joining us um, through the audio and video or just audio only, or you can participate in the chat room as well. My name is Bob Woods. I'm the executive vice president of coaching and training at Social Sales Link, as well as a social business strategist at PeopleLinks. Ted, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Ted Vedromo, kind of zoning out here. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I <laughs> no, just, that's okay. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I didn't get my second cup of coffee yet. There you go. Yep. Perfect. I'm the author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business, Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business, and I do a lot of online advertising for companies. That's kind of my specialty. Great. I'm Michael. And I'm Michael De Groot, Chief Storyteller at StayingAliveUK.com, and I advise people how to share their story using LinkedIn, social selling, and whiteboard animation. Great to have you all here. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We appreciate it. Um, so with that in mind, we always start off with a um, LinkedIn changes that we've noticed in the past week or some of the bigger changes that have happened, uh, you know, within the recent weeks that we just want to reiterate. So, uh, Ted, have you noticed anything different, unusual, weird, working well, not working at all on LinkedIn? Yeah, Monday morning I logged in and I saw that when I had a whole list of invitations mm -hmm. and I saw I had a little chat bubble. if. The person sent me a custom message. It had it very clear if they used the customized message or the customized or the standard message. Right. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And actually, Michael, you had sent out, was it a tweet or was it a LinkedIn news update just with a little UI suggestion, um, user interface suggestion on what um, on what LinkedIn could do to make that even better. Do, do you want to, I, I don't know if you can show that in, in the, in that window there, but you can definitely um, address it really good. Yeah. It's, it's, if you remember last week, the, the whole thing started changing all of a sudden the, the reply button mm -hmm. arrow or the reply arrow had disappeared. Right. And then something else came in its place and then where it looked like somebody had personalized these little bubbles came up and anyway it all changed over the weekend and <laughs> the majority of it is kind of got the reply button but I, I i've reached out to a few people and obviously put it on out on linkedin to kind of reach out to some folks but where underneath the image of the individual you've got a ignore or mm -hmm. accept right. button I'm suggesting why can't we just have a reply to button next to those two? Because there is enough space. So I, yeah, I just mock, of space. yeah, I just mock yeah. up an image to show ignore, accept, reply to, mm -hmm. you know, just those three buttons. Because who knows what that arrow is, you know, or who right. knows what those bubbles are. And I don't think anybody really truly wants to hover over something and see what happens. Uh, we need something that is quick, instantly recognizable, and therefore I'm trying to get LinkedIn to pay attention to do something different. I've had no response from anybody as yet, but who knows? Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes icons only take you so far. You need to just put it down in in simple English or simple whatever language people are using within the LinkedIn interface so that they know what's going on. The only thing I would I would wonder about is 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 would people know that when they click reply that they're not accepting. So remember when reply don't accept was um what yeah. used to be an option which which I thought was crystal clear in terms of um what it's uh, supposed to do. So so maybe so maybe a slightly tweaked answer there would be um, a well, reply don't accept or something like that. I don't know. Here's the thing. I, I think we've got to keep it simple. And let's look at what they're doing on the app, right? 
So okay, yeah. on, the, on the pending invitations inside the app, it's a cross or a tick, which is ig ignore or accept. Mm -hmm. right. If someone has personalized the message, then you have a reply to button sitting mm -hmm. inside. You know, the, yep. the message is enlarged a little bit. You can see what the message is, and there's a reply to button there. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. we're educating people, because most, you know, by the end of this year, there's going to be like 70% of everybody is going, to use, is going to use the app. They're not even going to the desktop. If you're educating people to click reply to there, you mm -hmm. might as well do that on the desktop as well and keep it you know synchronized the other right. thing as well it's in the wrong place so on the yeah. app on the app they've put it under network right so why can't we have it on the desktop under network in exactly the same place too because mm -hmm. we got a button there that says des uh, network why hover over some icon a plus icon see a drop down click on see all uh, i mean it's it's so badly thought through this it, mm -hmm. so i'm hoping fingers crossed that people there are starting to move things closer to where the app is yep and uh because that's where that's i believe that's the way it's got to go mm -hmm. makes sense it makes perfect sense which of course is why they didn't do it so <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, again, I think it's, you know, LinkedIn just being in their insular world, basically. And, you know, they don't, you know, they don't ask people outside of the company. They don't uh, test with people outside of the company. And, you know, I don't know what they're thinking. So, uh, Ted, uh, first of all, uh, before, uh, before going any further, I, Except for what you brought up, I haven't noticed anything uh, different or, or new on LinkedIn this week. Michael, what about you? I haven't. Uh, I can remember. Yeah, um, right. I, I wanted to share a couple of things that I put in the question. Chat. Yeah, that's right. Um, one about the two-step security. Uh, Lindsay um, Stamen uh, did a blog on two-step uh security mm -hmm. verification yep and and this is in view of all the press where this big kind of hack that happened four years ago is now resulting in some names being some email addresses being advertised for sale including mark zuckerberg's <laughs> yeah. allegedly so mm -hmm. what um so i went okay i'm going to do this two-step verification i i'm Oh, I changed my password at the time, so I've not had any problems mm -hmm. as far as I know. Right. But I went, okay, let's let's step up the security and really just to experience what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty simple to do as long as they've got your cell phone and uh, they, you know, they just send you a message with the code. Um, the, I've now had to do this six times, okay, because if you're using, say, Safari browser, Chrome browser, then it's it's one step oh. for each of those. Yeah, it's, because it's counted as separate logins. Separate on logins. So it's, yeah, it's not it's not based on IP address or right. device. It's based on where you're lo you know the login that you're using. Yeah. Not only that, it signed me out of Buffer. It oh. signed me out of Flipboard. Oh. It, so I had to log in, you know, do the two-step verification on mm -hmm. Flipboard again, on Buffer, on iOS, yeah. on wow. iPhone, on iPad. Um, so I'm just kind of giving everybody a warning. I think it's a good idea to do it, but just expect that depending on how many apps you use and how many, you know, bits of software you're using everywhere where you go to LinkedIn, you will need to do two-step verification yeah, but once it's set up once it's set up and it remembers it then you're good to go so so far i've done about half a dozen maybe there are others i don't know yet uh, hmm. um, so, that's so there's just a lot of work involved but i mean when it comes to security is it worth it i mean you know i would probably say yes i mean but that's just me i mean especially nowadays my god with everything that's you know yeah I think yeah. security wise here. 
and all of our accounts are tied together, like you said. Our Twitter accounts tied to our LinkedIn accounts, tied to our Facebook account, tied to our buffer. Yep. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. And then the only other thing there was a post that a connection of mine put out last night with a blog um, suggesting that you can no longer see the text of the original invitation if somebody has sent that to you whether it's the standard invitation or a personalized one and people were saying you, you don't bother sending personalized invitations any longer because there is no point and i'm quite upset about that because i don't i don't think it's the right thing to do and actually the blog post was wrong because you can find the personalized or the mm -hmm. standard invitation now because it appears underneath the relationships tab on the individual's profile. So again, for all of those who are watching on replay, um, mm -hmm. just be sure, have a look at if somebody's invited you and you've accepted, you can see their personalized or standard invitation in the relationships tab on the profile and that is something new it didn't happen previously it wasn't there it was lost for a period of time but i think it must be when you guys when you bob and Bryn had a conversation with the user experience team they must have fed that through and, and got that changed i suspect hmm. yeah because that's not what we meant and 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 i definitely think and the other thing that a lot of people overlook is that when you customize an invitation and if people are getting emails about their invitations, um, all of that does show up in the email too. So, I mean, you know, people, as long as people are, are still receiving um, alerts about invitations via email, which I still do because I want to have a, a nice, easy way to view the um to, to view the customized text so i keep so i keep that notification active um that that you know people can still see these things via email yeah do you have that going to a separate folder or something that's getting so many emails yeah um i used to have that ha happening and then i upgraded outlook and i just haven't gotten around to it yet but 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 believe me on a weekend where i've got a chance one of these um one of these weekends, I'm definitely going to start uh, start setting up some mega rules again in, in my Outlook so that everything channels properly. Yeah. Yeah, so a few weeks ago, that's exactly what I did. I've got a rule now that has a folder for all the – for, and the only thing I'm getting now is invitation that I'm allowing. Same here. And also the acceptances yeah. as well. Those are the only two emails. Yeah, and they're going into two different folders. Mm-hmm. And everything else is switched off because I can engage with it on um, the app. Yep. That's where I'm spending a lot of my time engaging with notifications uh, and other things. Mm -hmm. there, there is just one other thing that came up uh, I've just thought of, and that is Pulse. And yes. Yes. I, 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 there's a couple of things that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Because Ted, you talked about it the other week when you said, yeah. "Oh, the app, the app is different and it's changed." Mm -hmm. And I switched on notifications with the Pulse app, and it's very interesting that I get a notification um, coming up to say when somebody's published one of my networks has published a post. Somebody in my network has published a post. And when I swipe on that notification, it takes me to their post inside the Pulse app. Mm -hmm. However, inside the app, there is no button to show you a list of notifications. And it's very difficult to actually mm. find posts by your connections. It's, mm. again, a totally broken workflow. Then I noticed in the flagship app, I'm now receiving notifications, and this is how I found Lindsay's um, post on this two-step verification, because it notified me inside the flagship app that she had posted a 
a, a pulse post, which was which is new. I hadn't seen that before. But then oh. recently, unless no one's been posting, I haven't seen any come up in the last few days. Nothing has come up in my notifications on the flagship mm. app. Whereas I've still been getting notifications inside the Pulse app. I hope that makes sense, but it's totally well. Broken. I published yesterday, so um, so so if you didn't see mine, then that's kind of uh, so that's kind of confirmation right there. Didn't see yours come up. Okay, huh. no. so that is confirmation that it's broken somewhere along the line. Hmm. It's no, it's not a bug. It's a feature. We all we, <laughs> yeah. we all know that, especially about LinkedIn. So, um, un, until they declare it a bug again, at least. So, uh, okay, so that's interesting. Actually, I, I did notice something else that it's finally rolled out to me. I think Ted brought it up a, a, a couple of weeks ago, but but just the a new uh, look of, of pulse posts on on the desktop so 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 once upon a time you had like all of the stories um all of the stories that you probably don't care about running off to the um left hand side and then um and then the publisher content would be on the right hand side now it's just um it's just the uh the person who, who's publishing it their their story so it's it, it's actually a little bigger a little bolder um I actually like it a lot better. The the kind of nice thing about, which I think is actually nice, is that when you have published a post yourself, um, you used to be able to see number of views, number of likes, and number of comments. Well, the number of likes has gone, oh, I'm sorry, the number of views has gone away. So, so people who are viewing your post can't see if it's popular or not, basically. All right. But at the same time, they have now provided like a, a little um, graph icon here that when you click on it, it takes you to the specific um, uh, details about your post in terms of uh, page views and the demographics of your reader and who's responding to it and things like that. So, um, so I know that a lot of people don't don't publish should publish but a lot of people don't publish and um but for for those who do that's it that's a pretty significant change as well as just the uh, user experience part of it for anyone who is now reading um who is now reading those uh those uh, published post stories as well plus i i did think it was interesting that that the stories that used to run up and down the left hand side are gone now too i'm not sure what the thinking was was behind that i actually don't mind it too much but um and then and then you also don't have that endless scroll of stories going or i don't think you do i let, let, let me confirm that really quick yeah i'm looking right now it's interesting because they'll have like trending and marketing and advertising yeah all that's gone there's just well it's in here in mine yeah, today mine. and when i click on it it goes to yahoo instead of pulling up a pulse post yeah, mine looks or fast company. It sends you right to their sites instead of keeping you within the LinkedIn site, which is a change since last week. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> so on mine, and they don't I, show you how many likes and shares anymore. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I I I wish that I could show my screen and you can show your screen and everything and we could kind of co compare and contrast because, uh, oh, wait, maybe you can. Yeah, let me. You, you can do screen sharing, Blab. So I'm going to do this. <laughs> if you've got the plug in on Chrome. Uh, yeah, it won't let me do it. There it is. Click to view. Oh, no, it just. It just takes you to the. Um, you yeah. can't. You can't actually view it. You can't. You could do a screen share, but I think don't share the link. Okay, a little live tech support, everybody. So. Um, okay, the, can you see the purple square with the little screen on it? Yeah. Can you click on that? Yeah. Add to Chrome. So I'm adding the Blab screen share extension. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, there you go. Okay. Share. 
oh, this is kind of cool. <laughs> okay, so instead, let's see. I'm going to, because this probably looks small to everyone. Very, me, very small, yeah. Yeah. Are you, is that better? Yeah, it's pretty small. Is that I, better? That's better. Okay. okay. If you can, if you yeah, can increase the, the browser as well, so click the green button on your browser. Oh, you just want it just max? Yeah, we max it. Yeah. That's it. Now zoom even more. Hey, that's it. Okay. Oh my God, on a twenty-seven inch screen, you have no idea how huge this looks. Anyhow. Um, Anyhow, so I don't know if, if you all are seeing this. Uh, that's very different. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So views are gone. Yet here's that little graph thing. Yeah. Left left hand side stories are gone. Scroll down through this fantastic piece. Oh my God! I don't know who wrote this, but he did a fantastic job. Uh, <laughs> so anyhow, um, you get down to the comments, and then remember when you had that continuing scroll before with other stories loading down. Now it just has yeah. don't miss more posts by me. Yay. And I'm looking for, yeah. So that's like totally different now. That's brilliant. That's nice. No, I haven't got that yet. Yeah, and that Very so nice. so they must be slowly rolling that out. And then when you click on that, you're taken to, you know, the the bad news about your views and everything else. And yeah. uh all that. So that's that is how that works. So, so hey, I did find something new this week. You did. This is what that means. Okay, so now get me out of this thing. And then it shows you the likes and the comments right. when you're in your story. But on the home page, it doesn't show you. A lot of times I'll look at something that says it has, you know, a thousand likes. I'll say, oh, that must be interesting. I'm going to read that. So. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, we can exactly. for a while, hey, then they take it away. It <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then they put it back. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Well, we've all learned that you can now screen share on Blab too, which is that that, that was actually very cool. That was actually very cool. Now, of course, all of my browser windows are like blown up to you know, your guys' heads are almost their actual size in front of me right now. So <laughs> 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 I love it. Very good, very good. Yeah. So, does anyone have anything else on, on on the new front? Nope. Okay, cool. So, um, so next it's uh, so next it, it, it's time for our one thing where where we bring up the one thing that that uh, that that we all coach and train on, and we just want to highlight for everyone who is watching. So, Michael, why don't we start with you first this time? Okay. Ah! I love it when I surprise them. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So um, yeah. it's to do with Twitter because we said let's mix in a bit of Twitter flavor as well, not just focus on LinkedIn all the time. Right. And it's to do with searching for um, people you want to get in front of. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of reverse strategy is connecting and engaging with people on Twitter first before you start searching people out on LinkedIn and start the search with a hashtag of your industry, your subject, your, your stuff basically. So for example, if we wanted to connect with people who are, interested or specializing in the area of say social selling put the hashtag in the search of social selling inside twitter and then see what comes up and then go and look at the accounts uh, that are mentioning social selling inside their their summary their their, their profile their bio mm -hmm. but also other people that are tweeting and using that hashtag and very, very quickly, I mean, it's just one example. I mean, you could say, okay, I want to connect with salespeople. So you could put down hashtag sales. Or if you want to connect with marketing people, hashtag marketing. And then it allows you to, you know, find those people and then connect, you know, follow them. And then also, as we talked about last week, put them into a list. And then, you know, just start with a few 
and see where you get to and then start engaging by using the list um start engaging with their tweets commenting liking retweeting just to get some engagement and build some trust with that individual mm -hmm. now they may not necessarily follow you back but that doesn't matter you can still engage with their stuff um and and so you should so that's my one thing for this week search a hashtag create a list of accounts that you want to engage with and start engaging with them very good very good ted the spotlight is now oh. michael do you have uh I have a question about Twitter. Do you find that lately, if you don't follow people back, they unfollow you eventually? Uh, I haven't noticed it uh, specifically because I haven't. So th th there are quite a few people that I don't follow back. First of all, no. uh, companies. Okay, I might be a bit different, but I don't follow back logos at all. Uh, I only follow back people's right. faces and I've been doing that now for a few years. So I only have people that I connect with. Number two, there are a lot of people out there that are following us all that are selling Twitter lists. So I won't follow them. Yeah, I don't follow and Twitter lists. And if they drop off, I don't care. Right. Um, but I, generally speaking, right. if it's a person and they um their profile looks okay then i will follow them back straight away i do that every day pretty quick so i i won't notice if they unfollow me later on i i won't really notice that as such so i haven't had that experience hmm. yeah, i just kind of noticed it right i guess about six or eight months ago for some reason i just noticed a lot of people were unfollowing me that I wasn't following because I don't just yeah. follow everybody back like you. It's like mm. I, I don't want to follow those people. So I think some some of these people are teaching it as a strategy. I have if seen people that. don't follow you back. That I have unfollow seen actually. Them. Um, I'm just wondering what tool are you using to to see these unfollows? Because I know that there are tools out there that give you access to to, to that kind of data. I'm just wondering um, uh, what you're using. It was a program called Tweet Adder. Uh -huh. Actually, I haven't used it in probably a year. Okay. Maybe it was a year ago I saw this. But it was just kind of like if I saw your list, I could see all your followers and oh, okay. start following all your followers. And then for some reason, I started seeing all these people unfollowing yeah. me that I wasn't following. Huh. It'll tell you who you're following right. that you're not following. They're not following you back. And I know some of these people were teaching that. It's like, well, what's the point? Why do you want to have the same right. number yeah, of followers exactly. as Yeah, I don't follower? know. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure what the strategy is is there. I mean, I get sometimes I see people who follow me, unfollow me, and then follow me again. And I think that that's just because they're they're trying to, you know, kind of percolate up up, up on my radar, basically, which which but I mean because yeah. I don't get a lot of, I mean, I get some follow requests, but but not a lot of them. So so I kind of know who's doing it, and I'm like, oh, I yeah, I see what you're doing there, and yeah, exactly. So trying to get your so, attention, yeah. So I get the follow, unfollow, refollow thing. I don't get the follow, unfollow, Oscar <laughs> La Vista thing. You know? <laughs> as as a strategy, I know I don't understand that. I I, I don't get that. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you don't it's, get it either. <laughs> yeah. The I only I tool that something. I've used, I just shared the link, is Manage Flitter oh. um, for looking at people that aren't engaged, that haven't followed me back and I followed them, and some folks that are like no longer active on Twitter. So every six months or if I remember, I have mm -hmm. a bit of a clear out of people that I follow because they're like their last – tweet was in 2014 or something right. like that and the other thing i did yeah. when twitter first came out i was very excited about following celebrities and uh i don't know but this was the thing on twitter right i mean yeah well, yeah yeah you're right it was yeah without a doubt it's such, <laughs> yeah. a, such a big thing for celebrities today i mean ridiculous some of the uk folks on tv they're always like comparing each other you know like how many followers have you got type of thing oh yeah and it's it's big right. news 
So, yeah, I, I this is several years ago now. I cleared all them out as well. You know, using Manage Flitter, it's really easy to kind of just find them and get rid of them. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Is that very businesslike? Yeah. That's I bet right. they're really offended when you unfollowed them. <laughs> Michael unfollowed me, and I don't understand why. Oh no! And yes, that was a British accent because they Lady are British. Lady Gaga's still so crying. Right, you did that really well, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Well, my one thing this week is um, actually follows on what I brought up uh, last week about um, about the uh, channeling strategy that I had mentioned. So, in other words, getting getting uh, you know trying to engage people on Twitter and other social platforms as well, and then draw them into your LinkedIn profile so that um, so that they will see what's there, like what's there, and hopefully engage with you, but bring it all through to Twitter. So in other words, draw everybody through to LinkedIn and do the engaging on there since that's, since that, in my opinion, is still the best place, especially for uh, B2B sales types to, um, to engage with people. Uh, and, and I actually did my published post on that this week too. Uh, so while I talked about all that stuff last week, there's just only one thing that I want to highlight this week. And that's, um, if you do use a strategy, you have to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is social selling optimized. I mean, that's, that is probably the hugest part there. So, so again, I've, and, uh, and uh, with my learners that I teach at, at, at people links, I always, I always use the analogy of a house you know, you need to have that solid foundation before you do all of the, not only the normal stuff, but some of the crazy stuff that you want to do with your house too. You you do need that found foundation there. And even though you're using all these other social platforms to try to bring people into your LinkedIn, you still need that solid foundation on LinkedIn. Otherwise, you know, it may work, but it's definitely not going to work as well. And it's not going to work as often as it could if you do have the uh, LinkedIn um, uh, profile really optimized and really up to snuff so that uh, people can feel free to reach out and connect to you. Or, you know, even if, if, if they're not on LinkedIn and you're looking at your, uh, and they're looking at your public profile, I mean, even in your summary section, just having your, um, your phone number, your email address, and maybe a, um, and maybe a web address at the very top of your summary line is actually very important because that means anyone can contact you, even if they're not connected to you on LinkedIn, or even if they're not on LinkedIn in at all and then the other thing about that um is and 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 this is kind of a uh a tip just in, in and of itself when you put the name at, or your phone number and your email address and maybe your your website at the very top line on the mobile platforms um they actually show the first I forget how many characters but it's most of the first line actually gets shown up in the same box where your name and your headline and stuff like that is too. So when you fill that out too, what it looks like on mobile, and actually, why don't I try? Why don't I, why don't I see if I can show this on, on mobile? So um, I know. Tell well, me about it. He's taking a big that's, risk here um, now. Uh, first of all, I have to find that. <laughs> yeah, please. Another important thing while you look for that is that first couple yes, lines shows up in Google search results. Yeah. So that's really important. The people that search your name, you, you know, you always Google someone's name before you meet with them these days. And that's one of the things that'll show up under the LinkedIn think, profile. Do you think it's dangerous from a spamming point of view though, to put your uh, contact details there? It's making me sign in. I haven't, I haven't signed out. I don't know what's going on. Remember talking about signing in and stuff. And you know, at this, well, let's, Let's see what happens. Let's see if it makes me go through um, authentication or not. So anyhow, I'm sorry. Go ahead and, and, and say what you were saying before. Do you think, because uh, I don't have my contact details in the summary, and I'm just wondering, and, and make your point, Ted, about if it comes up on you know first few lines on search results, 
and so it's public yeah. as well. Um, now, people can find my contact details anyway, but perhaps not as easy because we know that on search, if they search your name, LinkedIn is likely to be the first one on the first page. Um, yeah. Is that? Just about. That looks horrible. So, so basically, right that line right there is where my phone number and my email address comes up. Okay, let's. I'm going to try something else here. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, I didn't. It's. Of course, I'm trying to do it. Yeah, that's. That's not going to work. Yeah, that's a good mm. question. Is that spammy or not? You know, I mean, it's, it can go, I mean because can it's it not ways. hyperlinked or anything like that, though, um, I think that it's more difficult for. I, I think it's easier for screen scrapers to pick up on hyperlinked um, links uh, or hi hyperlinked text than it is just regular text, basically. So I don't think. Oh, here he goes. Here he goes. Now, how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> I could tell you, but then I have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a perfect example of it right there. I mean, that's that that's absolutely yep. perfect. So you've got a little icon for a telephone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just then you've too. got your email, and then you've got something else. Well, that's, uh, yeah. Book a call with Bob. Okay. Right, yeah. So Is that a little keyboard or something? Yeah. Okay. Got you. It looks what? more complete on an iPad, but uh, but it definitely shows up. Actually, it looks pretty yeah. good on a phone. That's a good little – makes it very easy for people to reach out. Too bad it's not, yeah, clickable. It's not clickable. They can call you right from but, that. But if somebody really wanted to, to call me just based on that or email me just based on that, they could. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's get rid of it. See if okay. It. No, not so at all. It doesn't look spammy. No. Not at all. Oh, it worked. Okay, so Michael, get ready to kill me. How did you do that? Okay, so you need an app called Reflector 2. And is Reflector spelled? It, 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 I use Error Server. Okay. Error Server is one I now, use. Now, is Reflector too, spelled the same normally thing. Or, or, yeah. or, or is it, okay, or, you know, with like number a K two, or number a, two. Number two, okay. Yeah, I, I think they've got their original one, and this one was updated for iOS 9 or something, and it, okay. it, which meant you had to purchase it. It was free before, um, and now you've it's not expensive. It's not that expensive. Right. Now, okay. yeah. yeah, you can do nice videos well, of yeah, that's, what things look like on your iPad I'm and really your phone now. Looking forward to I've had Beth myself. ask me the question. I've had Mario ask me the question, so... So you've got a bunch of people on your kill list now. Correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good to know. Good to know. Just kidding. So I've been doing a lot of oh, LinkedIn no, ads. No, no, what's Tell what's me. happening? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, what's the story? <laughs> oh, boy. Because you know the story. <laughs> Yeah, because it's a contest that it goes till the end of June. So we have this really time sensitive to get as much advertising out there as fast as possible. And it's for the state of Connecticut. They're trying to get people to move their businesses there. So it's a $5 million wow. grant at stake. So we're trying all kinds of targeting. Different. First, we were trying to nurture them with content. It was getting a lot of clicks, but we didn't have time to nurture yeah. them to enter the contest. So we switched now our direct promotion, like, here you go. You one in six chance of winning up to 1.5 million for your and business. And which type of ads are you business. doing? The banner ones or the, the, the line, the top line? The, are you using sponsored, sponsored updates? updates. Okay. Which is their most popular product? Sponsored updates. Yeah. And their best yeah. ones. And it's frustrating because the first round took six but days. I, I thought to sponsored get approved. updates were instant. No. Whenever I've done one, I've tested no, this out. Like, I, I don't had... do a lot of advertising, but when I did it before, it's it's like instant. It it starts immediately. 
Oh, so it but, was. Oh, now they're uh, proving it. Right. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, because I did one a while ago, and it was like instant. It was too. really frustrating. I'm literally duplicating campaigns, so it's the same ads, and I just changed the targeting. For every and it's taking five one. to six days to get approved. Oh. And I had to take to Twitter. Yeah, it's the same ad they approved already. So I go to Twitter and I just start harassing. Yeah, them. it's like it's like I have green triangles. I want to give you. Please let me give this money to you. And they're going. I'm not so sure. I don't know. But that's frustrating. Yeah. But we we got a list from PitchBook of potential companies. So I'm creating ad campaigns from that. Like I put a hundred companies per campaign, which is kind of frustrating. But those are converting like crazy, and they're getting a lot of social interaction. Wow. So the targeting is working really well. We're getting a Instant lot of good entries post. into it. So you, you're when you, you're targeting specific companies in that. Okay. Right. Okay. Brilliant. And they're all startups, so they're small companies. So I have to get that audience to at least a thousand people before they'll let me finish the ad campaign. <laughs> a lot of quirks, but it's working really, really well right now. I've got the cost per click down from like seven dollars a click to about right. four dollars a click. Yeah, that's good. As we improve the performance, so. Great yeah. stuff. So it's not great for time-sensitive promotions, but for long-term, I think it's a really good Yeah, sounds go. like it, definitely. Yeah, times have moved on, and, there's a, and yeah. they're appearing inside people's news feeds, right? On mobile as well. Yeah. On mobile. Yeah. Yeah. And on mobile, yeah. too. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> they weren't showing up on mobile a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and 60% yeah. of the traffic's on mobile. Imagine that. <laughs> Boy, yeah, they'd be I'd rich if they'd hire yeah, us. Just, I'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> bring in a bunch of us and we'll tell them what to do and it'll get you know stuck in bureaucratic hell for a year and by that time everything will be changed anyhow. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Excellent. <laughs> Let's oh, yeah. just all go to work for Twitter. Nah, I don't want to work for Twitter either. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're laying people off, so we don't want to go there. <laughs> they're starting to sublet some of their space in San Francisco, so they're kind of thinking uh, this might be a peak in the bubble, a bubble wow. for a high tech. Wow. Wow, so real estate in San Francisco yeah. might actually be coming down, or it's probably too soon to say that yet? Yeah. No, no, there's still a huge demand. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks for that update. That's really so. interesting to hear that what's been happening there. and. Yeah, and and disappointing that you're having to wait that long. That is not that's not good because that means we're trying to spend a thousand dollars a day on ads. I mean, for this it means campaign. again the workflow is broken. Yeah, you know, wherever you yeah. look, there is something that is broken, and it and that's not good news mm -hmm. for any of us actually who are willing to for the product to be great. Uh, because we're promoting the product without getting paid for it by educating people how to use it. And, you know, it's a shame. It's a shame. So um, let's send this video to uh, Jeff Wiener to, you know, to, you know, we can help. Mm -hmm. And watch it. I even, I put a ticket into the help desk and they never got back to me. They approved the ads, I think, but they never responded and said, oh, sorry for that. the delay or whatever. Imagine never got that. a response. Wow. Of course not. And there's no phone not. number to call, of course, you know. That's that's such a shame. Yeah. Yeah. That is. It's frustrating. Not good. Well, that's good. The good news is the ads are working I, well. That's excellent. That's fantastic because I actually wanted to end the show on a high note and the fact that the ads are working, I think that we should just say fantastic and just kind of wrap things up from here. What do you think, guys? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that sounds good. Awesome. Suits me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't get us started. <laughs> so, uh, so thanks for joining us on Social Selling Wednesday. We are here uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, whatever that translates for you around the world, as well as uh, as through the various podcasting types of things that we go through. Hopefully, um, hopefully we'll have even more channels uh, open and available to us soon. So again, socialsellingwednesday.com. We're here every Wednesday. For Ted and Michael, I'm Bob Woods. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Have a great day, everybody.
Thanks. Thanks, everybody.